Live from Richmond, Virginia, it's Russ Barkley, back with your research review. Good morning to all of you. And as always, we're going to start with some dad jokes. That's what I think of them, too. They get really bad, and I've noticed sometimes I'm repeating them. But here we go, folks, for your Saturday morning enjoyment. What do you call a magic dog? A labracadabrador. <laughs> I actually thought that was pretty good. Uh, okay, here's another one for you. How do you make a fire with two sticks? Just make sure one of them is a match. <laughs> and finally, what do you call a fly with no wings? A walk. Oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. I know. They're all hysterical. I want to thank you all for putting up with my dad jokes. Okay, we've got five researcher articles to discuss this morning. And as always, their links to the journals are in the description that goes with this research review. By the way, don't forget to have a look at the video I posted two days ago on a research article, a very large and a very well done study for the most part, on the effects of Western diet consumption by mothers during their pregnancy on the risk for ADHD and autism. So go have a look at that study if you want to hear my thoughts about that one. I addressed that separately because it wound up in the trade media, at least over here in the U.S., and I thought it deserved its own special treatment. Uh, those of you who already saw it know that one of the confounding variables they did not look at in the study, but should have, was the extent to which the mothers had ADHD, which we know predisposes people toward a Western style junk food, high sugar, high carb type of diet. Uh, so that said, let's get on with today's research articles. First up is an article that appeared over in the journal Frontiers in Psychiatry. This comes to us from researchers out of China, and it's a study on the effects of vitamin D insufficiently, insufficiency excuse me, and its relationship to sleep disturbances in children with ADHD. So these investigators studied a group of children, it was 260 kids in all, who had ADHD, and they were divided into those who did and did not have vitamin D deficiency. And then the investigators measured a variety of symptom ratings and functional impairment ratings, but specifically they were interested in the parent ratings on children's sleep habits questionnaire. And what did they find? They found that overall, Children with ADHD had significantly elevated ratings of sleep problems. That's not news, folks. We've talked about it repeatedly on this channel that over 40% in many studies of children and adults with ADHD have a variety of sleeping difficulties. What these investigators did report, however, is that the sleeping difficulties were more problematic in the group with vitamin D insufficiency. Specifically, they had a greater sleep duration and more sleep disordered breathing uh, in that group. So it may be that vitamin D deficiency worsens the sleeping difficulties seen in those with ADHD. By the way, there was no relationship of vitamin D levels to a degree of ADHD in these individuals. Prior studies have shown that kids with ADHD have a slightly higher likelihood of being deficient in vitamin D. And among that subset of children, it may be beneficial to supplement their diet with vitamin B, excuse me, vitamin D tablets. And you might see a little bit of improvement in their ADHD symptoms. It's certainly not going to cure the disorder by any means. This study suggests it might have little effect on ADHD and more effect on sleep. So a very interesting study there. Now, our next study comes to us out of the U.S. here, and this is a study on the effects of the more recently developed non-stimulant veloxazine marketed here in the U.S. as Kelbri. This is a drug very similar to Stratera, which, as you know, is atomoxetine, also a non-stimulant. Both of these drugs have their effects through the norepinephrine transmitter 
that is the reuptake mechanism in the brain. So uh, these drugs go into the brain and they block the reuptake pump, if you wish to call it that, and that leaves more norepinephrine in the brain to do its job. Uh, Veloxazine is believed to be even more specific to norepinephrine and its reuptake than is atomoxetine, but I'm guessing there's not all that much difference between them in their clinical effects. Now, the purpose of this study was to see whether combining veloxazine with a stimulant medication was safe, effective, and was it more effective than stimulant therapy alone. Typically, clinicians will recommend this combination in children or adults who do not have as robust a response to the stimulant medication as one would like to see. And therefore, adding a second drug that works on a somewhat different mechanism in the brain might give one greater coverage of the clinical presentation, symptoms, and impairments that the individual is experiencing. The authors found that the combined therapy was safe and effective. They do report a variety of side effects associated with the combination treatment. These are rather common side effects associated with the norepinephrine reuptake uh, inhibitors. They also reported that the combination therapy was more effective at improving symptoms and reducing sleep disturbances than was seen in the stimulant monotherapy alone. So it looks like from this study that combining these drugs when necessary, certainly don't want to do it for everybody, but when it seems indicated appears to be safe and effective. So uh, my compliments to the authors for a very nice paper answering an important clinical question on the safety and efficacy of this combination. Next up is going to be an article that appeared over in Psychiatry and Clinical Neurosciences. This comes to us from authors in Switzerland for the most part, though it looks like there were a few collaborators from the U.S., and it's a study of brain iron load in adults with ADHD. Now, I wasn't very familiar with this kind of research, but apparently in reading the article, it turns out that over time, particularly as we age in the elderly, there is an accumulation of iron in the brain. And that this is particularly so for individuals with higher body mass index, uh, those who uh, may have smoking, and also those who may be at risk for mild cognitive impairment, maybe even dementia. So iron levels do appear to have some influence on brain functioning, and as the title implies, appears to be detrimental to neuroaxonal functioning. So the study found that among the 32 adults with ADHD, they found higher levels of iron, particularly in the frontal cortex, than was seen in the typical individuals. So they report that our results indicate altered regional iron content in the brains of adults with ADHD. Uh, this is particularly increased in the precentral area uh, and appears to be something that might be affecting neuro axonal functioning that, that is leading to damage of the neuroaxon. So just wanted you to be aware of that. I wasn't familiar with this, uh, obviously in need of further study, particularly how do you get the iron out of the brain when there is an excess accumulation of it in these adults. Okay, my next study comes to us from Turkey. And it's an interesting study on a problem that is specific to some male adults with ADHD, and that is a propensity for premature ejaculation. Adults with ADHD report somewhat more problems with this area of sexual functioning than do typical adult males, and the authors of this paper wanted to find out whether treating these individuals with methylphenidate, a stimulant, might have some positive effect on their symptoms of premature ejaculation. And so they studied 53 adults with ADHD, uh, and they took a look at those who did, there were 19, excuse me, 34 rather, 
who had premature ejaculation versus 19 who did not. So it's a relatively small study, but still rather interesting because they're doing a within subject study, which is to say they're giving the medication before and afterwards to these individuals. And what did they find? They found that in addition to improvements in ADHD symptoms, there was improvement in their measures of premature ejaculation in the study. Uh, and that this improvement uh, appeared to be about a standard deviation or more. That's a rather sizable improvement in functioning on the scores they were calculating for this variable. So uh, just wanted you to know there's some help out there and help for adult males with ADHD who might be suffering from this sexual difficulty and that stimulant treatment might be beneficial for it. Finally, my last study is actually a follow-up to many other studies that I've covered here on the channel, and that is on the effects of acute aerobic exercise on adults with ADHD, specifically their cognitive performance and measures of brain cortical excitability. This study comes to us out of Taiwan. And the authors found in studying 26 drug-naive adults with ADHD and 26 age and gender matched healthy controls that the cortical excitability was enhanced in typical healthy controls while their cortical inhibition was decreased following aerobic exercise. So that's what happened in the healthy controls. What happened in the adults with ADHD? It went the other way. Following a single acute 30-minute exercise, aerobic exercise, the authors found that in adults with ADHD, cortical inhibition was enhanced by the exercise. And furthermore, the adults with ADHD showed greater inhibitory control and better motor learning following the acute aerobic exercise. In other words, exercise had the opposite effect on adults with ADHD than it had on typical adults. I found that sort of interesting and thought that I would share that with you. But it does follow up on other articles I've talked about that show some improvement in managing ADHD symptoms from regular aerobic exercise. Okay, well, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you for joining me this Saturday morning. As I've said, go back and have a look at that other video on Western diets in mothers and their effect, that is the effect of the diet, may have on risk for ADHD and autism spectrum. Otherwise, join me next week for more commentaries, as well as another research review next Saturday. And of course, join me for more bad dad jokes as well. But in the meantime, have a great Saturday and a fine weekend. And as always, live well, be well, take care. Bye for now.